Praise God. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. And we did have a few technical difficulties, but we have the victory. Amen. We thank God for you today. And we have a wonderful lesson on this evening. We're going to be talking about synchronicity. Synchronicity. Synchronize with God's people by not acquiescing to worldly standards. Amen. So just give him a praise. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So we do have this uh, <clears throat> this title, Synchronized with God's People by Not Acquiescing to Worldly Standards. This is in our salvation series that we're now doing in the month of September. And we're going to talk, be talking about fellowship. Oh. Fellowship. Amen and non-fellowship, amen, because there are levels, there are levels that we must uh, adhere to when we're dealing with fellowship and because we are in the world, amen. Okay. So there's levels to this, and love is the highest level of human interaction. Yeah. Uh, just because you're in the church, that doesn't automatically mean that you operate on the highest level. Because we know that we need to grow from faith to faith, from grace to grace. That means from a lower level to a higher level. Even once saved, you still need to grow. Amen. So uh, the ter term we're using today is synchronization. And um, synchronization just means the operation or activity of two or more things at the same time or the same rate. So we need to be in sync and synchronizing with the people of God. Mm -hmm. Synchronizing with God. That means in step with one another. In other words, unified. Amen. Right. So we're going to talk about synchronization. So just some things I picked up out the dictionary. It says uh, lack of synchronization between the dancers make it look clumsy. So if you're lacking um, unity with others, and then it doesn't look right, mm. um, especially if you're calling on the name of Jesus, you're, you're calling on the name of Christ, and you're not doing the things that's conducive of Christ, then that's clumsy. Mm. And just in the computing, another example in computing, the action of causing a set of data or files to remain identical in more or one or more or one or more locations. So okay. you can synchronize your folders, have the same information that many people can pick up that same information. It's in sync. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we are um, to be fellowshipping with one another, but there's also um, a point where we're not supposed to be fellowshipping with uh, darkness. Mm -hmm. We are not supposed to be lockstep with the things of this world. All right. um, if you're saved, you are in the light. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about the salvation series. That's uh, Salvation is if you said that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and Jesus accepted you based on your heart. Because many times we don't say things that, that we really mean that line up. But God accepts you once you say call on his name yeah so we have no fellowship with darkness that scripture second corinthians 5 14 could you get that one real quick um so i'm gonna have my lovely wife carolyn read that scripture but while she's getting that uh, we're not supposed to be unequally yoked that means not linked up with the things of this world being lockstep and synchronize with the things of this world. And we're going to break that down a little bit uh, today also because Jesus was accused of being um, fe having fellowship with darkness. And we're going to have that um, Q&A in just a moment. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.14 For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Okay, so is that 2 Corinthians 5.14? I think so. 
and Second Corinthians five fourteen. Okay, so we, the scripture we wanted was, uh, "Be ye not unequally yoked." Amen. Be ye not unequally yoked. So, but that was a good scripture. <laughs> that scripture is awesome. <laughs> Amen. Okay, that's 2 Corinthians 6.14. 6.14. Amen. Amen. And it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath life with darkness? Amen. So, just like a, a physical body cannot be in two different places at the same time. So, you cannot be in the light and in the darkness at the same time. Right. The scripture says that fellowship has, what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Mm -hmm. And what com communion has light with darkness? So there, the, the two things cannot exist in one uh, setting at one time. Amen. So it's either light or darkness. Mm -hmm. The two don't have fellowship with one another. Now, they accused Jesus of fellowshipping with sinners. Um, they accused him of, of being um, uh, fellowshipping with darkness. Yeah. Amen. So we're going to look at what Jesus' response was in Luke 19 and 10 um, when, when they said um, okay. that Jesus was... Uh, Fellowshipping and eating with with publicans and sinners and uh, with doing the things of uh, uh, of this world and having fellowship with darkness. How did re Jesus respond to when they said that to him? Luke nineteen and ten. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So the Son of Man, Jesus, has come to seek. And to save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. So in order for a preacher, a minister, a man or a woman of God, an evangelist, they must go out into the world. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, be ye not of the world. But we can't not, not leave the world unless we pass on to eternity. So we have to stay in the world. And while we're in the world, we must do what? Do what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Seek and save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. Now, you may be in some compromising environments that sometimes you may be on your job. You may have you be in environments that are not conducive of, of, of the speech patterns of a saint. Amen. Or in a situation where it's not light, it's darkness. Mm -hmm. But you have come. You are here to provide light in dark situations. Yes. Not to run, not to hide, not to be scared or afraid, apprehensive, but we are here to be light yes. and salt. Mm -hmm. So when we're in a situation, and it may look from afar that, uh, but what you're doing is seeking mm -hmm. and to save that which was lost. We're not conforming. We're not being a part of that foolishness, being a part of darkness, being a part of confusion, being um, a part of the voidness of sin and the foolishness of darkness. But we are there to be a light. Yes. A light to a dark and dying world. Now, one of my favorite scriptures comes out of 1 John 3 and 8. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and that scripture uh, really reveals and talks about why Jesus came. It just cuts right down to the heart of the matter. When you say salvation, the salvation business, the God business, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is the light of my life. Whom shall I fear? He who abides under the shadow of the Most High. Amen. Mm. These things come to one scripture in my estimation. Okay. First John 3 and 8. Yeah. 
and it says, He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. That he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. So the Son, the purpose, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yes. That's it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Last Sunday we preached about the battle is not yours. Mm -hmm. Amen. The battle is the stand still because the purpose was to destroy the one who committed sin in the beginning. So this battle is not yours. This battle is between Jesus, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the devil. Well, We're just here to provide a light in a dark world. Mm -hmm. so, so Jesus is proactive. Mm -hmm. He, You know, there's darkness. So when it says that Jesus was there in the beginning, the word was there in the, in the beginning. Yes. Jesus is proactive. It says, the Bible says that darkness was on the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God came and said, that, let there be light. Let there be light. So Jesus is doing the same thing today yes. in this dark world. Let there be light. Yes. And we are the lights. Amen. So when we go out into the world, we need to be a light. Yes. We need to be proactive in saving souls. Now, like they say, don't get it twisted. I don't like to say that. But in reality, don't get it um, twisted. <laughs> you know, in other words, don't get it confused that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Yes, he did. Amen? So we are not to be flowing contrary with the world. Well, we're, we're supposed to be uh, contrary to the world, but we're not supposed to be contrary to or against the Spirit of God. Yeah. So that's that the title that we have is synchronized with God's people and don't acquiesce mm. to the world. Mm -hmm. Now that word acquiesce, acquiesce is, is basically saying that you are um, giving um, a right for something to take place. Like many people say silence gives consent. Amen. So when you're silent, you're really acquiescing. Mm. You're saying, okay, that's okay with me. Because you're not speaking out. When you're seeing an injustice, when you're in the world and darkness is taking place and you're seeing foolishness and confusion, you many times we acquiesce and not say anything or not speak up because we just want to stay below the radar and get along. Just, yeah. just get along. Yeah, get so, along. Yeah, so. But many times we need to say something. Because we are the salt. And we are the light. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was proactive. Jesus went around um, seeking to save that which was lost. Yes. Jesus went around doing good. Mm -hmm. Jesus went around healing the sick. Uh, raising the dead. Making blind eyes see. Amen. So he wasn't acquiescing to the things of darkness. Yeah. When they sold things in the house of God, he took up a whip and, and, and cast them out. And he said, my father's house is not a den of thieves, but it's a house of bread. Yeah. Amen. So it's a house. It's a lighthouse. Amen. But many times darkness comes. Darkness comes to try to, to shed darkness upon your light. Mm. Try to uh, make you lose your save, savior as a salt. Mm -hmm. the, lose your taste, amen, as a Christian. Wants to dim your light, just like a garden. If you let a garden go, the weeds will overtake it. Well. So we need to be proactive in taking the things that are uh, contrary to the word of God and contrary to the things of God and, and, and pulling it out. Speaking up, not acquiescing, not making our silence give consent to the things of this world, but saying not so. It's many times you may think saying 
get thee behind me, Satan, is uncomfortable. It may, may, may be uh, unpopular, may make you look like a villain. But Jesus said it to his right hand man. He said, when he said something wrong, when Peter said something uh, that Jesus that was contrary to what Jesus' mission was, he told Peter to get thee behind me, Satan. Many times we are afraid of their faces. Like Jeremiah, and God warned Jeremiah, do not be afraid of their faces. Do not be afraid of their sternness, of their positions, of their financial wealth, of their, their pedigree, amen? If God said do something, stick to what God told you to do. And if something is wrong, you need to say something. Amen. If you don't say something, get up and leave. Mm -hmm. Do something that is not giving you the appearance of acquiescing to evil. Because you are the light. You are the salt. And this is the purpose why Jesus came. To seek that which it was lost. He sought you, he found you, and amen, you are now saved. So now you must reciprocate. You must do the same thing, amen? Uh -huh. You may not sit in the background and just just get along and just be, live a mediocre, mediocre lifestyle. If you're saved, it's the most important decision that you made in your life, mm -hmm. amen? Amen. So don't flow contrary against the spirit of God you know what God will tell you when you're going wrong he will warn you when something it's, a, it's in your spirit something in your spirit says that's not right mm -hmm. when something is wrong you're saved God always gives you a warning to get up and leave to say something or just to, to, to be led in the paths of righteousness mm -hmm. Now, many of us, we just keep going or keep staying, not listening to the word of God, not listening to the spirit of God. When God is, is telling us to do something and we do contrary, and it's just like the energizer bunny. We keep going and going and doing the thing that God is not telling us what to do. But what you get to a point where you hit rock bottom. Well. You keep going the wrong direction. You're going to be like the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. You're going to look up and say, hey, hold up. I'm a child of the king. Mm -hmm. I got all this stuff. In. Why am I living like this? Mm -hmm. Why is my lifestyle so contrary to what God chose me to be? Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a kingdom of priests, we're a kingdom of, we're a royal lineage. Yes. You, we are the family of God. Thank you. Lord. So why should we have to settle for the, what darkness has to offer? Because it's a zero sum at the end of the day. Jesus. When you're following the devil, when you're following the world, when you're following and living in a dark state, it's a zero sum game. Zero sum. Amen. So we want to abide in God and God, have God abide in you. Yes. You know, this reminds me of the church, the denomination we belong to, which is the Church of God in Christ, founded in 1907 by Bishop Charles Harrison Mason. However, the name was given to him in 1896 in Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. Yeah. The story says that he was walking down the street and he had a revelation of what to name his church. Amen. He was walking. Now, this man is a leader. Amen. But he was walking down the street with the paracletes, with the Holy Spirit, and God revealed, uncovered a name for the church. All right. And this name was the Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit said, if you name your church the Church of God in Christ, there will not be a building that will be able to hold everyone who belongs to that church. Mm -hmm. Amen. And as we know today, there is not a building on earth that can hold every member simultaneously that belongs to the church of God in Christ. Amen. He was obedient to the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. He was flowing in sync with the spirit of God. 
Now, now uh, we're approaching seven million members, and it's so many, and it just started with one man walking down the street. Amen. So we want to be uh, listening to the Spirit of God, and having God abide in you is the best thing that you can possibly do in your life. Yes. And this year we want to celebrate also um, uh, William James Seymour. He was the prayer leader of Azusa Street, and it's actually um, this last month, August, was his 100th birthday. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we want to celebrate our those who we stand upon their shoulders. Amen. We stand upon these great men of God, and and, and during a during a time when it was not a uh, likely for a African American to be a leader. In a, in, and having um, a white people follow him, white um, men, young, young men carrying their briefcases. Mm -hmm. But this was happening. This has happened to our, our founder, Charles Harrison Mason. He had many um, um, American German adjutants, amen, during the time of the 30s and the 20s of the uh, 20th century, amen. So this, this, this lets me know that true True holiness goes beyond culture, amen. True holiness goes beyond what society says, you are of this class, yes. you are this class. Yes. You are, in, in India, they call them uh, the caste system. In America, they call them um, a black, white, Irish, Italian, different, different structures of society got you at different le levels. They call them wasps and, and japs and baps all kind of names, placing people in different categories. Amen. But when we read Acts, the second chapter, it says that they were all in one place and one accord. And they were one place and one accord. Amen. And the Holy Spirit came. Amen. So God comes when unity is present. Yes. God comes when we're synchronized with the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't rely on what class you are, what color you are, right. what race you came from. Right. Amen. The, the church is the church. Amen. Right. So anytime you have a church that's dealing with cultures and everybody of this one culture and they look at you strange when you come in, and they, that's not a church. Amen. That's a social group. Amen. Much like a fraternity or some other things, these things. These are social groups, amen. But the church is a church, is a church what Jesus talked about when he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church, amen. Right. So you have many things that try to come against the church, amen. You have the most powerful empire that ever walked the face of the earth. That is the Roman Empire that came against the church. They could not defeat the church. So they came up and said, if you can't beat them, join them. Amen. So they infiltrated the church. Amen. And all these things came about. All these pagan days and all these pagan things came about inside the church. But the true church is a church that walks with God. The true church is a church that talks with God. The true Amen. church is a church that's like Enoch. Walked with God and was not. Amen. That's the true church. The true church is synchronized with God. Not scared of what the world has to offer or what the world has to say. If God said it, if you are in the church, you believe it. And what? That settles it. Amen? So we know that light has no fellowship with darkness. Light and darkness cannot coexist at the same time. And light and darkness, um, darkness comes and tries to shed a bad shade on your light. Amen. And that's that's natural. That's what happens all the time. We see that in Genesis one and one. God created the heavens and the earth, and we know that anything that God creates, that God created the the earth, the heavens and the earth by the breath, by His uh, spoken word. So whatever he creates is not void. But Genesis 1 and 2 says the earth was without form and void. So whatever you do, 
that's that you try to uplift or you try to build or you try to do something good, the enemy has a way of coming in and trying to mess that up. Yes. So he even tried it with God. So why not you? Amen. Why not you? He's going to try it with you. But you know what you have to do? You have to stand firm. Amen. Stand firm on the word of God. Amen. And be synchronized with the things of God. Because we know that this battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Amen. The Lord's. And the salvation, your salvation is of God. Yeah. Amen. So we just thank God that, you know, there that that we don't have to fellowship with darkness and, and the dark darkness comes knocking, but we can say, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. We can say it without any uh, blowback of, of, of feeling bad because when Satan comes, he don't have pity on you. Amen. Mm. So we shouldn't have pity on him. Amen. Say it. He tries to destroy, to kill, to steal and destroy what you have. So why should you pity the devil? Amen. Don't pity him. No, no. Amen. Keep your foot on his neck. Yes. Amen. Amen. Keep him under your feet. There are no gray areas. But if it was a gray area, it would it would be called mercy. If we do slip into that gray area, say, God, have mercy on my soul. I messed up. Bring me back into your grace. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. But if you find yourself doing it again, say it again. Give me the strength, God. Amen, amen. Because the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. But he keeps getting up. He falls six times. He gets up on the seventh. He falls seven times. He gets up on the eighth. And he falls 114 times. But he gets up on that 115, 115th time. Because he knows that God has him in the palm of his hand. Yes. Amen. God has you in the palm of his hand. And the only way that you can get out of that palm is you jump out. Mm. If you jump out, because he won't release you. All right. He won't let nothing harm, no harm come to you. Thank you. So don't jump out his hand if you messed up 116 times. Say, God, I'm sorry. Have mercy on me. I didn't mean to go in that gray area. I know that gray area leads to darkness. I know that darkness has no light. I know that darkness, can, can, you mess up one time, you slip into darkness. They had a song. Slipping into darkness in the 70s. Slipping into darkness. If you slip into that darkness, you may not return. Mm. Jesus. If you put your salvation on the shelf, you may not be able to turn around and take it back off. So true. Amen. Because we don't know about when there's no uh, a reprieve. Once you die, you're in a fixed state. There's no purgatory. There, there doesn't say things that... When you die, you can change your mind. Amen. So you don't want to be caught out there. Amen. 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 So we want to not acquiesce. Amen. But we want to synchronize. Synchronize with God's people. And the reason why I say God's people is because God's people was given the power. Amen. We're given the power and the authority to reign. Yeah. Amen. So we need to synchronize with one another. Amen. Mm. God has authorized us already. Amen. Right. So if you have the authority of God, you already have the power of God. All right. The Greeks call it the dunamis. That's the, yeah. the dynamite, the explosive power. Yes. But then you also have the exousia. Mm -hmm. That's the authority. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the authority to have power over the enemy. So you already have the dynamite power, the dunamis, and you already have the exousia, the authority. Amen. All right. So one another with one another, we need to link up and to synchronize with one another. Amen. All right. So we just thank God for you today. We're going to continue to pray for you. Continue to pray for us. This list, lesson we had was synchronized with God's people. Don't acquiesce to the world. Yes. Amen. So we know that God will enlarge your tent Thanks. if you help those who are moving in the same direction as you. Mm. 
Praise God. Amen. Yes. So that means if you bless God's people, you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need that's a part of the synchronization part process. Yes. Blessing those who are people of God will bless you. Amen. And on a, on the other coin, you can curse yourself too. Mm. You can curse yourself. Let me look. Okay, if you block God's people, a curse shall come upon you. Let me prove it to you in the scriptures. In, in, when the children of Israel was leaving Egypt and going toward the promised land, the Amalekites, the Amalekites, they would come up behind the, lap, the, 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 the train the, where the people were um, weak and, and, and slow walking, the children, the older people, they would come from the rear and, and, and kill those people, to attack those people. Mm. That's like the enemy. The enemy attacks you when you're weak. Well, Amen? Yeah. So these Amalekites, they're cursed from the house of God. They shall not be able, they, they shall not enter the house of God. They shall be cursed and they shall not be a part of the people of God forever. Amen. That's why God wanted all the Amalekites to be destroyed. Amen. The seed of the Amalekites to be wiped out. And that's what the battle is. The battle is against the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Yeah. Amen. So the seed of the woman, which is the church, which is church, Jesus is the head, is, is against the seed of the serpent, which is Amalekites, Hamites. Ha not Hamites, but um, Ham um, Hamanites. Mm -hmm. Haman. Amen. The seed of Haman. The seed of Agag. Agag Agagites. Amen. And Amalekites. Amen. All the same seed. The seed of the serpent. Amen. Wants to destroy. Wants to uh, promote darkness. Amen. Wants to darken your light. Amen. So we don't want to we don't want to acquiesce to uh, the things that are trying to destroy us, but yet we want to uh, be a, a light and continue to keep our freshness. Amen. amen. So we just thank God for you joining us today. Amen. Amen. Thank God for this, um, this synchronizing with God's people. We did have some technical problems, but we know that the prince of the power of the air is bound concerning the man of God, concerning the people of God, concerning the work of the ministry. Yes, amen. Yes. Amen. He, he he tries to come to prevent things, to prevent you from praying, to prevent you from moving forward. Amen. But God said, not so. You shall be the head and not the tail. Yes. You shall be above and not beneath. Amen. Yes. So we just thank God for you. And we uh, ask you to continue to pray for us, continue to pray for us and continue to to um, if you like send offerings in we have a cash app Berea Kojic 3 that's dollar sign B-E-R-E-A-C-O-G-I-C the number 3 and um, you can send those in we're having our first church anniversary on um, yes. September 18th amen yes. and we want to invite you to the city of Rogersville Alabama here on um, Highway 72, address is 16067, Highway 72, Rogersville, Alabama. We would Amen. love to see you there. Yes. We have a great speaker for you, our own superintendent. Hallelujah. And we just thank God for Dr. Harris agreeing to it, to, to come out. And we're going to have a, a host of dignitaries and well-wishers. We just thank God for it. God blessing us and, and keeping us in his will. Amen. Because it could have been the other way, amen. It could have been the other way, easily, amen. So God is in control. Continue to um, synchronize with the people of God, and God will bless you, amen. Amen. God bless you. Wednesday night Bible study and we did have a few